Hey third graders, it's Mrs. Sandra here. And I know last week we just talked about an artist, Vincent Van Gogh, but we're getting into that kind of time of year where I do a special third grade project, with just for third graders, um, about another artist named Edgar Degas. It kind of sounds, uh, it's French, so it looks like Degas, like gasoline, but it's Degas, French. Um, and the reason we're talking about him is because he was very, very well known for his uh, work with painting ballerinas and rumor has it that you've been starting to talk about the nutcracker for your third grade classes so i thought it'd be fun to do a ballerina related project and maybe throw in an extra artist study for you today so let's start talking and learning a little bit more about him all right um edward degas was born in 1834 and died in 1917 he was 83 years old so he lived a good long life he was originally from Paris, France, and spent most of his time there. And he was accepted into a really, really well-known art school, but left after a year because he thought it wasn't for him and he'd rather travel and paint in Italy. Sometimes the best job or the best way to learn is kind of doing it on the job and learning in the field, as they say. And like I said, he was pretty well known for his ballerinas. This is a self-portrait of him, so he painted himself in this one. Um, but before we get into uh, some of his ballerinas, I wanted to kind of compare his style of art to Vincent van Gogh since we just talked about him. So you can see on the left is a painting by Degas. It's not a ballerina painting, but it's another really well-known painting of his called Viscount Leptic and his daughters crossing the Plaza de la Concorde. It's French. I have a terrible French accent. Sorry if I said part of that kind of goofy. Um, and this was made in 1875. If we look at Vincent van Gogh's self-portrait, we haven't seen this one yet. I didn't show this one to you in class, so it's a little newer for you. Um, this one was done in 1889. So it is about, I'll say do the math quick on that. It's 10, 11, 12, 15, 14 years older than uh, Degas' work. So it came a little after. And if you notice something similar, some similarities or some differences, uh, maybe think about that for a little bit. I think one thing that's pretty similar is maybe the color of the Van Gogh face and the color of the entire Degas painting is that kind of creamy warm color. And both of them are kind of just capturing that little moment in time. But I would say Van Gogh's is a little bit more expressive. We talked about how he added extra radiating lines on his stars to make them look like they're glowing and big and beautiful. So. They look kind of similar, but uh, Van Gogh might be a little bit more abstract in a sense that it doesn't have as many details as Degas. So, um, something to think of. I like showing you work with two different artists at the same time, so you can kind of think, oh yeah, these were both paintings that we looked at and maybe talk about them, all right? So, let's get into the ballerinas a little bit. Um, like I said, he, I'll show you three images. Um, this one's called Dancer, and this is actually a drawing. This is done with pastels, like you remember oil pastels and chalk pastels we used in class, and charcoal, which is a fun drawing medium we usually use when we're a little bit older. And this was drawn on this bluish grayish paper. So it has that kind of already that gray background, and they drew that white and the pops of color on top of it. And you can just see how like floofy that dress looks, right? really kind of pretty to look at and it's still a little sketchy a little fuzzy but you can get enough of the idea that's there right um this one's a little bit more finished or formal because it is a painted one um it's called the dance class and if you look at all of these uh characters almost they're all doing all sorts of things there's a group of the girls up in the front that look like they're fixing dresses and there's one girl leaping across the room in the middle but she's far away so she's not the main point of this painting you can see the man that has his uh, walking stick. It looks like our teacher here is inspecting and making sure she's got the right form. And there's people all over doing their thing. So that's kind of the point of this impression style that we talk about with uh, like Monet, who we talked about with Van Gogh again. I was capturing this like moment of time, though it's not as like fuzzy or blurry as some of the other impressionist art we've seen. Um, it still is a random moment. There's nothing really like you should be looking at this one thing kind of a moment in here. Just a bunch of crazy people at dance class doing their thing. All right. So I love how I, this one kind of has all this motion and movement and commotion happening. It's kind of fun to look at all the details. And this one is called Dancers with Oil on Canvas. So this one kind of reminds me of a mix of both of those that I just looked at before. Um, it looks a little softer, a little fluffier, almost like a drawing, but it, it is a painting. 
so you can really tell that one focus is on this front ballerina with the glowing fluffy skirts and the very dramatic arm motions. Um, but still, there's like this person that's cut in half on the very edge of the painting. So it's not meant to be just that ballerina. It's meant to be kind of this big act and all these other people that are involved, all right? So let me get out of this real quick here, okay? So uh, our project, like I said, is gonna be about making a ballerina. I'm gonna get all set up for that and tell you how we're gonna do that, all right? The very minimum things you're going to need here are a piece of paper, something to color with, crayon, marker, color pencil, something with color, um, and ideally, this might be the little trickier one, um, something that's similar to tissue paper. So it could be like a coffee filter, or maybe your parents or grandparents or your guardians or someone who's watching you has um, like tissue paper for opening gifts or wrapping gifts and whatnot, but we're going to do something that looks a little bit like this. All right, and this floofy paper is the thing that we're going to be needing, all right? If you don't have anything like that, honestly, you could probably make something out of, uh, like, Kleenex, tissues, uh, toilet paper. You could get really kind of funky with this, so, um, I'm interested to see what you come up with. But first of all, um, the, the shape that we're going to be drawing in this figure that we're drawing is a little complicated. It kind of looks like an egg with arms, if you think about it. If this was the yolk of eggs and a big, like, <laughs> you cracked an egg. So let me talk you through drawing this. I'm gonna normally give these out to students in class so they can see it while we're drawing together in our classroom. But while I'm drawing, I'm gonna keep it on my uh, desk so you can hopefully see it. And if you wanna pause the video to like look closer at this image or maybe look at my image so you can kind of follow along, that'd be great. All right, so let me switch to my other camera here and let's talk about drawing some ballerinas. All right, so, well, there we go. Um, so. Put that up a little higher. Oh, wish I had more camera room, right? Um, so, um, what we're gonna be doing today, let's start. I gotta move this gallery a little bit, show her in a little bit. Um, we're gonna start with a pencil. That will help because you're gonna probably need to erase things as we go because you can see that our ballerina's arms are on top of our ovally shape and her head, and there's lots of things on top of each other. So, eraser is gonna be a helpful tool here. But let's start. I'm gonna move our lady over here for a quick second. I'll bring her back. Don't worry. Um, with this kind of blobby shape where our skirt's gonna go. All right, I'm gonna just kind of do an oval. It's okay if it's not perfect because we're gonna be covering most of that area with that tissue paper or that coffee builder, whatever you're gonna come up with the skirt. All right, you can even use fabric if you have some lying around. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna draw this really nice kind of like curving S that goes all the way through. And that's going to kind of make up our arms for our ballerina. Okay, we're going to kind of go up and down. It's like a really nice kind of wavy line. All right. So, um, like I said, I'm using a pen right now so you can see it. But if you have an eraser, you're going to want to erase where the arms are going over the skirt. So I'm going to kind of just do a curve this way. Then the head is going to go around here somewhere. And I'm going to do a curve this way. All right. They're very just flowy looking lines for hands right now. We're going to keep it simple right here today. Um, and you can actually kind of add another line nearby to make it look more like an actual arm instead of just a normal line. So from maybe one line, I'm going to kind of go curve. I'm going to get skinnier at the top. It looks like a tentacle almost right now. <laughs> and I'm going to go curve and down. All right, you could add a thumb if you want to make it look a little more like a hand. So I added like another curving line there. Do you have another curving line here? A little up and down for a thumb. Very cool. And from here, we're gonna draw um, a head shape. That's kind of on the shoulder. So we're gonna keep it on the top half of our arms right here. And I'm just gonna draw an oval. All right, have this nice head shape right here. Um, if you wanna add some hair, this would be a fun time to do it. So you could maybe say, I wanna have some like bangs up front or have some shorter hair. Maybe you want to have her hair in a bun, you can do some swirls up there. Maybe you want her hair coming down a little bit. It's going to be up to you. You can fix the hair or change the hair however you want to. Maybe you have a bun, long hair, and bangs. Maybe all those things. That's fine. All right. And we can't forget the rest of her body because right now she's like supposed to be kind of leaping at you right now off of onto your paper. So we have to do kind of the front too where, uh, where the dress is. So we're just going to have kind of a curved line under the arms. Okay. 
So we also want to add a little bit of a face. Um, I guess if you really don't want to, we could keep it a little more abstract and not have a face. But I'm going to add one just because I want it a little more realistic this time around. So kind of in the middle, I'm actually going to start with the nose. I'm not going to put it right in the middle because I don't want her looking directly at us. We're going to have her kind of looking down. So to keep it simple, I'm going to do kind of an L shape. I'm going to go down and curve in. Okay. Um, kind of looks like an upside down seven too. So just keep a simple kind of nose. And then I'm going to draw two smaller eyes. Do dot dot. And then give her some eyelids. And you will have a pencil to change and fix things up if you want to. I'm going to kind of be a little sketchier because I can't erase here. You want to do some eyelashes. Um, a thing people usually always forget is eyebrows. So we'll give her some nice eyebrows so she can show off her face. And right now I'm thinking, oh man, her chin is really circle. I don't know if I like that. So I'm going to kind of come down and make it more pointy. Okay, and I could erase this by pencil, but I could just draw more hair cover it up, right? And I'm going to maybe make a little bit of a smile and some lips. And to make lips, all I'm going to do is adding a curved line underneath and maybe a wavy curved line on top. All right. And eventually we're going to be gluing tissue paper around our person. So we don't have to worry about too much about the dress now. But one thing I would like to put in is a foot. Because when we're all done, hopefully, there'll be a little foot being able to stick out at the bottom. All right, and we'll be able to kind of use the tissue paper to cover it up a little bit. So from here, I'm going to kind of draw two curving lines to, to be kind of your ankle area. So I'll be like a curved line in. And another curved line in. Okay. And we can kind of just make it almost an oval shape at the bottom to be your foot. So I'm going to go out for the toes back in and I'm actually going to add a little bit of a lump for a heel and if you want to make it look more like a slipper you could draw that another curved line up here okay. maybe you want to add some laces going up doing some letter X's okay could be kind of fancy shoe so this is kind of our rough overview of our ballerina okay we're doing all this with pencils so we can change in color and change things around as we go all right from here, um, in class, we're going to be watercoloring with pencil first because if you get watercolor on Sharpie or on marker, it marker spreads a little bit when it gets wet, so we don't want to do that. So we're going to only be watercoloring the area around our dancer, okay? And then maybe a little bit on the top where her sh like where her uh, top of her dress would be, all right? Maybe her hair too. So we're not adding a lot of color, all right? But when we're all done. We're going to be outlining in Sharpie so you can see her arms a little clearer, okay? Um, and then you're going to have to come up with a skirt outfit, okay? So just because I don't know if you have tissue paper, I'm actually going to grab a box of Kleenex and show you what I would do, all right? Before I forget, crap. All right, so got my tissues. Like you might have at home, to be some tissues. Okay? So I'm going to switch over. Why did my music start playing? Silly music. Um, what I'm going to do, tissues, and you're going to want liquid glue. If you feel like being a little creative, you could use just white, but if you have some food coloring and water, you could actually dunk this in and don't do it too much because you don't want it to melt, but it will absorb the color and it could change color. All right. Um, you have to wait till it dries though because that doesn't want to stick if it's wet. So if you do want to change the color of your skirt, you could but it's kind of up to you, all right? So just to show you, I'm gonna switch cameras one more time here. Um, so we got our person, we are pretending she's all colored in for us. Whoa, come on camera. And what you're gonna end up doing, you're gonna get glue bottle and you're gonna be putting a little line of glue underneath and kind of around the head of your person, okay? I didn't quite do that yet because apparently the one glue bottle I grabbed is not quite working for me today. Whoa, sounds like it's breathing, we'll give it a shot. So. We're gonna do one line kind of around here. And I'm gonna start with that and I'm gonna kind of squish and arrange the tissue so it looks kind of fluffy, okay? It's okay if it's pointy or if it has some, some corners showing, that's fine with me. It just makes these look a little more fluffy. And I'm gonna kind of just stick this in here and hold it, okay? It's definitely gonna go outside of that kind of egg kind of shape we we're talking about, okay? 
And if you want to cut it from here when it's dry, you can, you're more than welcome to. But you can definitely use a few different pieces of tissue or uh, toilet paper or whatever you feel like using to kind of just fill up that really fluffy skirt. Okay, and you can bend your tissue around. You kind of want to make sure you can still see your arms though, so I'm kind of trying to fold my tissue under here. Okay, so even though this isn't completely dry yet, you know what, you can even use some inside of the tissue if you want your dress to stay where you had it, right? <laughs> so don't be afraid to add a little dot of glue every here and there, all right? So ideally, this will be super fluffy all the way around her head as well, all right? So like I said, you're gonna have all sorts of colors happening on top and on the bottom. Might take a few pieces to get all the way around the head, but it had this nice, really fluffy, kind of flowy dress kind of feel afterwards, all right? So, I'm really excited to see what you come up with. I love I love the fact that you're at home and you can kind of use different materials than what we might have at school because I'm always surprised and excited to see what you come up with, all right? So when you're all done with this, whoa, gotta be careful, she's still a little wet. Um, when you're all done with this, please post your image onto the Google Classroom so I can see what you came up with. I'm so excited to see. Um, happy creating.